Welcome to the first episode in what's going to be quite a long series looking at creating modern and useful GUIs and apps within Python Kivi. As usual, this will be explained in simple terms and it will be really project focused to help people gain a proper understanding of what we're using each of these concepts for. So in today's episode, episode number one, we'll look at the setup, building our first GUI, which will be a simple Hello World GUI, but it will put into place a lot of good Python and Kivi concepts. I will also look at setting up a virtual environment and some other computer science fundamentals, such as separation of concerns or abstracting our code. After that, we're going to look at, well, throughout the whole journey, we'll look at more of the Python background detail behind why we're doing certain things in Kivi. We'll look at some core concepts, both when building the back end with Python and more of the front end with the Kivi design language. Think of that as a separation between HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, that sort of thing. We'll then look at a proper development workflow and structure. We'll look at real world app projects, such as converting images to text, and we'll have an interface for that. Uh, looking at database projects, potentially also finance projects, and then displaying this in multiple device formats and how to distribute our code and package it up so that we've got something that's really useful, robust, and you can use it on your projects in the future. The first thing that I'm going to do is actually go ahead and look at the documentation as you may expect. So you can go to kivi.org and then click through to the docs menu and we'll look at just the sort of getting started, installing Kivi and the steps. You don't actually need to pay attention to this. That's why I've zoomed in slightly um, because I'm going to go through all of this in my Windows command prompt. I'm just sharing it here so that you know how to access the documentation. And also there are some potential additional steps or, or differences in the way you may do things if you're using Mac OS or Linux. So that's important to differentiate. But essentially, we'll be looking at setting up a virtual environment. It's the most robust way to avoid errors and other um, sort of complexities. And then we will look at actually activating this virtual environment and installing Kivi there. As I say, you can see here, there's some additional instructions uh, for Mac OS and Linux. So if you're using these operating systems, you might want to take a look. But we'll essentially be following these instructions. I'll throw in a few extra uh, additional hints um, and ways to validate some of the uh, the CMD prompts we've written as well. So don't worry too much about this. Just know that's how you access the, the Kivi documentation and you should be fine from there. So next up, we're actually going to go ahead into our command prompt or CMD, as you may see shortened as. Think of this as the Windows version of a Mac terminal. If you do need to access this and you haven't before, you can go to your search bar and type in CMD or command prompt, and you will be able to find this in your standard Windows programs. Now, one precondition here, uh, you should all, all already have virtual environment installed, so you can go to PYPI and look up the virtual environment package and install that if you haven't. But I do assume that you have Python installed. So the first step, we need to make a directory so we can type mkdir and we can just specify that path. I've specified an additional C here on top of my C drive. It doesn't really matter. And I'm going to call this Kivi series. And then I can just type CD to change directory and actually switch into that directory or let's think of a folder structure that I've created called Kivi series. You can name it whatever you like. And now what I'm going to do is actually install that virtual environment into this directory. So you can see I've got Python dash M virtual M and then whatever I choose to name my virtual environment. So I'm just going to call it Kivi virtual M. From there, I can type dir for directory just to check where I'm actually working in and I can see I'm successfully in that Kivi virtual environment, so that's fine. And now what I need to do is actually go ahead and we need to activate this. So we take the name of the virtual environment we created, which is Kivi virtual env, and we use on Windows backslash scripts backslash activate. You'll now see in the parenthesis we're in this activated virtual environment and I can type pip freeze. Now pip freeze is a way to show the Python packages you have installed. As you can see here, there's nothing. So what we need to do is take that final step in the documentation with this code I'm writing out, Python dash M pip install, and I'm going to install Kivi base and then within quotation marks. And after that, I can just go ahead and type Kivi 
underscore examples and this will install the Kivi installation along with the associated Kivi dependencies that we can require. You'll see that will go ahead, it shouldn't take too long. And when that's finished, we can actually type pip freeze again once it gives us the option to, uh, to type an input. And from there, we can actually go ahead and check the packages we have within our virtual environment. So previously we had nothing. Now, if we go ahead and type pip freeze, you can see we've got Kivi 2.2.1, the latest version installed, and a lot of the other packages that we would require. So that setup is looking good. What I will do, I can find this within my standard folder GUI in Windows by going to this PC, local disk C, the additional C that I, I've placed into the path, and then we can create a new folder within this Kivi series. So I'll just call this first app, and it's just basically where I'm going to use, uh, first GUI, sorry, and it's where I'm going to have my main Python file uh, from today. And also I will create a Kivi, a KV file, a Kivi language file as well. So I'll go to VS Studio Code, Virtual Studio Code. That's what I'm using. Uh, you can feel free to, to use whatever you like. It doesn't need to be VS Code, but I'll open the folder and it will be that um, first GUI. I don't want to open the, the virtual environment, obviously. Uh, I will look to open up this folder and now I will create the files that I require. So first of all, I'll create a Python file and I'm just going to call this main.py. Uh, as, as I said earlier, this is good from a perspective of separation of concerns, which is a, a computer programming principle that basically states that we want to separate our code, same as you may hear sort of code abstraction, because I'm going to use the back end in our, my main Python file and the sort of design, even in this first basic app, in this um, first app dot kv file and i'll explain why i've called this first app shortly and that's a kivi design language like i say think of that as sort of css if you were building a website that would be where you placed your styling we can actually specify the styling and so on in the python file but it's not the best practice so we'll start off as we mean to go on last thing we need to do check that our python interpreter in whichever IDE you're using is actually using that from our VM for our virtual environment. So I can press Control Shift P in Virtual Studio. I can type in to select my Python interpreter, as you saw, and you'll see I don't have an option for that virtual environment interpreter. So I can go through and click Find. And as per before, I can simply go into the, um, the file path that I previously specified and actually click through to my Kivi virtual env. And we set that up way back in the command prompt. And then from here, I just need to go to scripts and you will see my standard Python installation. And when I click that select interpreter, I've now essentially got all of the setup completed. My files are in place. I have that Kivi installation in a virtual environment. And you'll see if I went back now and press control shift P uh, for the command palette. And then I went ahead and checked Python select interpreter. I'm now connected up. So if you're like me and you're using VS Studio Code to verify this or validate it, you can just actually go ahead and go in and kill, click on that individual um, interpreter instance and just exit out of there. So we, we know we're connected to the virtual environment. We're ready to go. So we can actually go and begin creating this first classic hello world but this time it's a gui you may have run isolated scripts before but this is this could be your first opportunity um, and an exciting opportunity to make this into something fruitful a more real world uh, that offers users a real you know output and something that we will eventually turn into interesting applications with a lot of functionality so if things don't make sense right now don't worry we'll cover it in detail later on so the first thing that we need to do is from kivi.app import app. This just imports the app class. You've probably done similar actions a lot of times uh, from the Kivi app module. So it's just a base class for creating Kivi applications. Now, what we're doing with the class first app parenthesis app, it defines a new class called first app. And you'll notice our Kivi file, our Kivi design file is named that as well because that's how the kivi file will make a link to the python and it will know what design to to place and they're saved in the same directory also now we 
include pass because we may build on this later. So that's just a way to have placeholder text. And if you're new to Python classes or more complex elements of object-oriented programming, this may seem a bit intimidating, but it's not. You could brush up on your Python classes, but as long as you understand this is how it works, we run if name is equals to main to check if the script is being run directly in the main module. And first app dot run essentially runs the application as the main model, and it creates an instance of this first app class with the run method. And this is just how we essentially run our applications. Now you see if we if we do that, we specified no design in our first Kivi design file. So naturally what happens is we get a blank screen. So something has happened, but not anything that's meaningful. But this is how simple it is, even with segregating our code, which is a maybe a slightly more complex way to do this uh, at this stage, but it's good to start things off the right way. Um, even you know with that added complexity, it's very easy to get, get something on our screen uh, that actually prints a message. So everything in Kivi is made up of widgets, and the first one that we'll be introduced to right now is a label, which is a way of rendering text on the screen. You'll see that there, there are um, additional plugins you can get for VS Code. I'm using it right now, may later. Uh, but with the label widget, underneath when I specify the text I want to display, I need to use a tab. Don't use space bars. Python is sensitive to tabs, so use the tab key. I'm going to place the text Hello World, so very simple format, and then font size. We'll need the underscore uh, because this is sort of like a key phrase with Kivi. I'm going to make it 64 and I'll take this opportunity, as you can see, just to save my files. And now if I go ahead and run this, you'll see the messages running. I get hello world on my screen. It may not look like much, but we've actually covered a lot of ground here with setting up a lot of the dependencies. And the great thing about Kivi, it's a lot more modern than a lot of other Python frameworks like tkinter. And even when we're just specifying a very simple label, it's going to be, it's going to fit the screen size. So it's going to be adaptable. So that's really powerful, especially when we're using a cross-platform framework that can work across devices. So that was this first episode. We've built up our dependencies, We've learned about code abstraction, setting up a Python file, a Kivi design file. I've actually got our first GUI. So very exciting stuff. Uh, I will add to this playlist quickly. And please follow along. Uh, next, next episode, we'll be introduced to more of the widgets. And from there, we'll go to, to look at more of the layouts. And we'll start actually building fun and powerful GUIs and applications. So if you enjoyed this, please feel free to like, subscribe, and share. It helps me know which content to focus on, and I'll see you in the next episode.